Jules, let's just devote a little more time to Brazil. Yeah. Because they are Brazil, after all. Um, you mentioned this before. It was kind of a mixed squad. And look, England were a mixed squad, too. There were important players uh, missing. But in terms of drawing conclusions on Brazil, and it's Doriva has just arrived, very little time with the players. What I thought was interesting is when I look at the starting 11, if you were to say, like, every Brazilian player in the world is available, how many of these guys would I expect to be in the starting 11? I wouldn't have expected very many. No. Um, you know, looking up this, obviously the goalkeeper is not going to be there when Allison and Ederson are available. I think yeah. Danilo will start. Yeah. Um, Bruno seems to be in the mix. I hadn't seen much of him before, but he looks at the back. He looked reasonable. Yeah, but Marquinhos. But there, Marquinhos there are Marquinhos. better options, yeah, right? Yeah. Beraldo, you're going to tell me, he's made quite the splash, but he's yeah. still a young player, right? He's young, but and I he's think an experience. he's so good. I think he's going to go to the Copa America, but he's not a nailed-on starter by any no. stretch, right? Um, Wendell, I feel like I've seen a ton of him <laughs> with Porto recently, but... Yeah, but he did well again, like he did against Saka in the two games with Porto. But again, this is a position where you have options. This is a guy clearly fighting for first place in the side. Yeah. Um, the packet... Assuming he doesn't get banned yeah, the packet for match starter. fixing, the packet, I would He's assume, will start. Bruno maybe should start. I'm not sure he will start. Yeah, Bruno will start. And Casemiro would just replace Joao Gomez, who was good in as the enforcer, the Andrich role, the, you know. But if Casemiro is fit, Casemiro slots in that team. The front three were Vinicius, uh, Rodrigo, and Rafinha. Um, again, I know Dorival, as we'll talk about later, has had 25 different jobs in his yeah. career. Um, so I can't say I've seen enough about him to know what his vision is. On paper, Vinicius is nailed on. I'm not sure either Rodrigo or Rafinha. I think they're, they're, they're going to go, they'll be mm. in the mix, but they do have other options. Yeah, I mean, Rodrigo can play wide for Rafinha if you want to play another number nine instead, then, then Rodrigo instead. Uh, there's a few options, although I thought they look good, they complement each other really well. I like the the way Guimaraes and Paqueta control that midfield. And of course, in terms of ball handling and controlling the ball and dictating a game, they are just so good at it. And especially if they can, if they're allowed, when they are overrun to make mistakes, to make fouls like they did, it was a lot of fouls from Brazil in that first half. And Paqueta got a yellow card after like 40 minutes where he should have had one after 10. And the rest would have been very different in a, in a World Cup game, for example. But for now, I just like the balance of that team. And I just liked even building up from the back at times when, when it's not on Bruno, but Ber from starting with Beraldo, I thought there were some really good moments. They were struggling at times because England, England's press was decent too, especially in the first half. But once the ball gets to Bruno Guimaraes or Paqueta, it goes so quickly after that towards Vinicius, towards Rodrigo towards Rafinha as well. Uh, and then off the bench, when you've got players like Savio, Andrik coming on with the energy, they're still maybe not ready for this kind of top, top, top level as starters. But off the bench, they're really good options. A word on Andrik, obviously so much hype. Um, it's weird that Andrik is like a viral YouTube phenomenon, like from the age of 10, Yeah. right? And we've kind of seen him grown up. Um, Watching him in this game, because you know, I don't get to see Palmeiras all the time, like, I'm struck by the fact that he's really developing. He looks like a big, he's a big boy. Yeah, like, yeah he's, he's strong. Very he's strong. strong. He's like a Zaire Emery type at the same age. In a way, though, when he first signed, when, you know, when we saw those highlights of him from the youth team and stuff when, at 16, in two years, like, it seems that like, he really has grown and filled yeah, out yeah. nicely. And, I mean, this is just a digression, but I watched Kendry Pies play... Um, against Italy for Ecuador is the same thing. Mm. Like, these are kids in that sort of 16 to 18 year range that kind of have adult bodies. Yeah, they have, they're ready physically. Unlike, say, I think to, I think about Lamine Yamal, yeah. who, you know, I think can still grow physically. I'm a phenomenal footballer and stuff. And, not, you know, um, I, don't know, I just found it really interesting just kind of the physical yeah, development no, it of, is. Of, of this next kind of generation of very young Yeah, players. it is. And also the confidence. I mean, the maturity that he has, you could tell already. Uh, even his face looks mature, to be fair, for a 17-year-old. And then the confidence that he has. There's a moment in the second half, I don't know if you remember, but he gets the ball, he's holding up the ball and then tries this back heel on the halfway line towards 
maybe Rafinha or maybe Vinicius, which is a, a really difficult thing to do. And in the way, by the way, it didn't work out. But to have the confidence to still do that in a game, and I think he should have taken that second chance. Uh, maybe the fact that he didn't, maybe he was still overwhelmed by the goal that he scored, and clearly that you see the celebrations, it means a lot to him. But this is maybe where he still has, and naturally to improve, is controlling the emotions. Obviously, in a game like that, you score one, you always you need to move on straight away. You can't still be thinking about that goal that you just scored because when another chance comes, and if the game had been one-one. That would have been a massive chance. So in the end, it doesn't matter, and he was still super happy, and rightly so. But this is where coming to Europe, playing for Real Madrid. I don't know how long he's going to play in his first season, how much he's going to play. But this is where I think the next big improvement will be is that that controlling the emotions during the same game, whether you miss, whether you score, all of that, which will come with experience. I look forward to that. Andre Joselu and Mbappe second string front line of course. next season for Real Madrid. <laughs>